So we've seen how an movement authority is issued to an onboard in both levels one and in two, three and up. So the train has now got a movement authority. Now what happens? Well, we know that the issued movement authority allows the train to travel a certain distance. And at the end of that distance, it will be supervised to a stand. But what happens if in the time that the train is traveling, the line ahead is now proved to be clear? How can we update the movement authority? So we'll have a look at how this happens in levels one, two, and three. In level one, you'll remember that the movement authority is transmitted by a Belize group, normally at the signal. That information is stored on board and cannot be changed until another Belize group is read. So whatever the signals may change to and be showing the driver, the system is working to that out of date information. Let's have a little look at a diagram. As our train passes the first signal, it will read from the Belize group the information about the movement authority. In this case, the movement authority extends as far as the red signal. <clears throat> as the train proceeds, if nothing else has happened, it will reach the yellow signal and read to the Belize group there. At this point, the driver may be being supervised to begin to slow for the red or not, depending on the arrangement of the signalling and the braking characteristics. The new movement authority read at the yellow signal will replace the one that had been read at the green signal, still ending at the red signal, and so hence the train will be supervised to a stand at the red. If, however, on approach to the red signal, it changes to green, then we want the train to be able to continue or even to speed up. But at the moment, it has still got the stored information saying that is the end of the movement authority. What is the solution? Well, one option is to provide an extra Belize group shown in blue. This is known as an infill Belize group. The train knows where to expect the next Belize group at the signal, which is now showing green. So we can send the information that will be sent at the green signal from the Belize Breeze group, blue Belize group as infill information. Because the train knows where the next signal is, it can append that extra information to the existing stored movement authority. This allows the train to continue at speed and be supervised to the eventual location. When the train passes the green signal and reads the new information from the orange Belize group there, it will replace the stored MAs. Now, of course, in levels two and three, we don't have the need for infill because the RBC can send an MA at any time. But what triggers that? Well, it could be because the interlocking has proven the route to be clear, or it could be because the tra train makes a request. Now, obviously, we don't want drivers to be slowed down unnecessarily. So we need to detect when the train is going to start asking the driver to brake for the end of authority. And this is called the perturbation location. It's calculated based on the maximum permitted speed of approach for the trains. For each end of authority, the onboard will be calculating a braking curves based on the braking capability of that train, and it will be indicating a maximum speed to the driver. At some point, the indicated speed to the driver will change from the maximum permitted speed to the start of the braking curve, and that joint is called the perturbation location. That perturbation location is always based on the maximum permitted speed of the train, not on its current speed. If the train is travelling slower, perturbation location remains at the same physical place, calculated on board to be based on the maximum permitted speed. Now, obviously, if we have a perturbation location and it is that point that the train can request a new movement authority, by the time the message has been sent and processed, the system will already be supervising the driver to start braking for the end of authority. That could be undesirable. So we have an option to send a time value, T mar, the time for the movement authority request. And that is a time at line speed the maximum permitted speed before the perturbation location when the train will make its request. 
and that request to the RBC can be responded to with an updated movement authority. Now, of course, with movement authorities, we have to remember where they originate. Now, in level one, when we started, we said they always came from a Belize group, the Belize group that sends the movement authority. But with the introduction of infill Belize groups, that's not quite true. If the Belize group is not marked as being an infill Belize group, then it is the origin. For infill to work, the onboard needs to know the location of the Belize group, which will send the eventual movement authority, and that is achieved through the linking information. And so for infill information, the origin of the Belize group, which will eventually send the information, is used. It is just that the information is sent earlier to enable the train to process it. So the infill updates the movement authority beyond a subsequent Belize group. And as we also know for levels two, three and radio, the origin of the movement authority is the LRBG, the last relevant Belize group. The last relevant Belize group is reported by the onboard to the RBC each time it sends a position report. And it's that last reported Belize group which is used as the reference for any message sent from the RBC, which contains a distance. Of course, it may be that the train has now read a new Belize group and not yet reported to the RBC, but this is the system that works and the train will record the last relevant Belize groups that it has passed over so that it can always relate to the correct one.